Hey everyone, Zian over here from Nintendo Life, and today we're here to share with you our review of Story of Seasons Pioneers of Olive Town on the Nintendo Switch. Now, this review was originally written by Kate Gray for NintendoLife.com and was reworked into this video by me. Now, I also want to point out though that Kate put an absolutely massive amount of time into this game, so let's see what she thought about it after all that time. Story of Seasons Pioneers of Olive Town might not bear the Harvest Moon title that would originally identify it as a contribution of the beloved series, but that's also just down to copyright, Japanese to English translation, and a split between X Seed and Natsume. It's not very interesting, so to summarize, Story of Seasons is the original farming simulator, and Harvest Moon, as it is now, is a sort of cheap pretender to the throne. And personally, it hurts me so much to say that, because I know there's so much potential in this series. But here we are. And in the past few years, even though the rival Harvest Moon games have decreased rapidly in quality, the Story of Seasons series has floundered all the same, and Stardew Valley has come to take its crown. But does Pioneers of Olive Town return triumphant, or does Stardew continue to reign supreme? As we said in our preview, which we'll leave a link to in the description down below if you want to go check that out as well, Pioneers of Olive Town is disappointing in the first season. It'll take players a long time to warm up to the idea that everything is handled with makers, the game's version of processing units which turn raw materials into usable and saleable items like wool into yarn, ore into ingots, and wood into lumber. For some reason, those makers make one item at a time, and so to make any real progress Progress, you'll need roughly a hundred or so of them chugging along. It's almost a full-time job just to handle the makers. Another huge issue is the lack of personality in the townsfolk. For some reason, they only have the sparsest of dialogue, and even when you're actually dating them, that doesn't change too much either. Outside of events and actually working in the various shops, they mostly wander aimlessly around the town or stand like statues next to their beds waiting for the day to end. However, much like most Story of Seasons games, the world brightens up after the first couple of seasons and things start to get more interesting. Once you've befriended someone up to two hearts, you'll get some insight into what they like, which means you can get on a fast track to seeing their heart events, the cutscenes that further your friendship. The heart events are short but sweet. We spent the most time with Bridget, so we were treated to a story of her learning to trust other people through animals. The maker issue sadly doesn't really ever go away, but it does get better as the game progresses. Once you've got a decent setup of all your makers you need, it's pretty quick work to fill them all up and becomes part of the farming routine. Later on, you'll even unlock giant makers, which can process a few items at a time, although they're expensive to build, so you'll likely be stuck with the ones you get as rewards for leveling up your skills, and that's probably it. There are 12 skills to level up in total, including fishing, cooking, communication, and mining, all of which cap at level 10. The more you level these up, the better you'll get at them, and the more materials of a better quality you'll get as a result. The skill progress is a nice addition and makes progress pretty steady and satisfying, as long as you're focusing your attention on multiple skills at once. There are still a few bottlenecks, like the fact that cooking takes half an hour, even if you're just making hot milk versus a decadent dish. What's more, you can only cook one meal at a time, even if you just want to make multiples of the same thing. You can't. And the seed maker, which is the only way to turn high quality crops into high quality seeds, is slow and can only process one crop at a time. Mining, farming, fishing, and animal care will take up the majority of your time while you wait, and all of those are as satisfying as you'd hope for in a game all about those exact things. The animals are extremely cute, and it's easy to unlock new ones since they appear wild on your farm every season, at least in the first year, and you can tame them to add them to your selection. Mining is a test of stamina and occasional mole battling, and though there aren't skips to help you get to the lower levels immediately, it'll eventually take you the best part of a day to get to the bottom of the third mine. Fishing is similar to how Stardew Valley's system works, and there are bait types and fishing rod upgrades to help you out. As for what your farmer looks like while they work, the character customization is pretty good. Plenty of outfits, hair changes, even eye color changes if you want, but the furniture and general house decoration is weirdly limited to a very specific small area of your house. 
You can't change the wallpaper or the floor either. Now, the customizable portion of your home does get bigger as you expand your house, but you'll never be able to truly put furniture wherever you want. And one of the biggest caveats of all of this is that the farming absolutely tanks the frame rate. This is an issue that the developers know about and are working on, but running through plowed and planted fields or even empty ones will reduce the frame rate to about five frames per second. Add this to the weirdly long loading screens and you'll be wondering what's going on behind the scenes. We actually had one loading screen that was still going after three minutes and we had to restart the game. But that was a one-off occasion. All other loading screens were sub 10 seconds. But still, that's a long wait. New features like the photo mode and the museum are fun to play around with, but the camera only holds 10 photos. And you can't really do anything with them besides donating photos of animals to the museum or upload them online to your friends so that way they can be featured as loading screen photos. And you can't even view them in a full screen mode to potentially save them as screenshots to your Switch either. It's a really strange decision. And speaking about the museum, it's probably the most disappointing feature of all. Taking clear inspiration from Animal Crossing, but with a fraction of the budget, Story of Seasons offering is just not good. The fish exhibit is a bunch of fish-shaped shadows. The treasure exhibit is a bunch of pillars topped with similar looking rocks. The animal exhibit is a bunch of animal statues on pillars. And examining these pillars gives you no extra information beyond the name of the thing and when it was donated. You know, if we paid to go to this museum in real life, we'd ask for a refund immediately. As far as the story of Pioneers of Olive Town goes, it's all about bringing tourists to the town, and you'll see them flocking in on the ferry with randomized appearances. But sadly, all with the same name, Tourist. Sadly, they don't do much beyond that. Your donations of materials and money won't really change the town in any meaningful way beyond a few cosmetic changes, and the townsfolk thanking you. The tourists don't go to the restaurants, they don't enter the shops, they just sort of run around at the port, and it's a shame because seeing the effects of tourism on the struggling town would have been really interesting. In summary, all of the issues that we mentioned in the preview are still there, plus a few more that we found by playing through an entire year of the game. Some of those issues won't be too bad once you get into the rhythm of things, and it's certainly a mile better than Harvest Moon One World, but it's by no means the best Story of Seasons game you can get. However, However, fans of the genre will find that they settle quite nicely into Pioneers of Olive Town, even as they are disappointed by the things it lacks. It's a solid, if relatively unremarkable entry into the series, but in our opinion, you'd be best off waiting for a sale and a bunch of patches, and getting Friends of Mineral Town in the meantime. While not by any means the best Story of Seasons game on the market, Pioneers of Olive Town is promising and disappointing in equal measure. Perhaps future patches will iron out some of the issues with frame rate and boring character dialogue, but for now, potential buyers should be aware that this game isn't quite in a state we can recommend. We here at Nintendo Life give Story of Seasons Pioneers of Olive Town on the Nintendo Switch a 6 out of 10. If you'd like to learn more about Story of Seasons Pioneers of Olive Town, you can find a ton more coverage over at NintendoLife.com. Now, I haven't put as many hours into Pioneers of Olive Town as Kate has, but I just wanted to flesh out some of my opinions as well. I think I'm about 25 or 30 hours in so far, and I've had a pretty decent time with the game. Sometimes it feels a little bit more like work than fun, and I think that's because, you know, there's some things like the characters just aren't as lovable as they were in past entries, and that isn't pushing me to, to befriend them. And uh, I, I do enjoy that the game sort of it kind of very slowly works you into new things. Like in the first part of your farm, you'll get the chicken coop. And in the second, you'll get the the cows. And in the third, you'll find the horse stable. And it slowly works you into these things instead of like in past uh, games, at least for the ones that I've played, it feels like they kind of throw everything at you at once. And so this game kind of gives you, it, it gives it to you at a, at a gradual pace. And I really appreciate that. And some of the new features are fun. Like I really enjoy the photo mode, even though it isn't as fleshed out as it could be. Uh, hopefully some updates will, will fix up some of that stuff. But the big thing for me is that it just, this is supposed to be a celebration of the Story of Seasons franchise. And it feels like this game wasn't really, it's not really taking it to the new levels that we would hope for. It feels like a lot of the, the features are just sort of half-baked. Like they just didn't have the budget to make 
uh, some of these features as fleshed out maybe as they would have liked, or maybe they didn't have the time. I, who, who knows? We, we don't have any idea. But as it stands right now, the game is a very okay farming game. You can still have a lot of fun with it, especially if you don't have as many expectations as we did. But this is where it stands at the moment. So for now, maybe, you know, like Kate said, maybe wait on Story of Seasons Pioneers of Olive Town. Wait for some updates. Wait to see if the DLC and things like that, if, if that all fixes some of our issues with the game. Hopefully it will. And hopefully we'll be able to come back and tell you something better at a later date. But for now... This is where it stands. If you'd like to check out some more Story of Seasons, Pioneers of Olive Town coverage, or other farming game sim stuff, we've been covering it a lot over at Nintendo Life. Kate has been absolutely knocking it out of the park with, with that coverage. So, so head on over there and check out some of the other news that we've been writing up. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. Stay safe out there, and we will see you next time. Oh.